We have a HK MP5K clone, it's a GSG German Sport Guns 522, fully charged up, semi auto. Let's try some fully auto. Hi everyone, Russ Douglas 222 again. Uh, sorry about the wee delay from uh, since my last video. There's been minor inconveniences like uh, Christmas getting in the way and other such stuff, and plus a few uh, physical issues, which I'm still trying to work through. I hope you enjoyed that little preview, a few seconds of uh, preview clip I just uh, inserted before this, just as a little teaser. Um, there's more footage coming after I've been uh, talking guns for a bit, uh, and basically this uh, this is a video on Airsoft. And for those of us like myself who are air gunners, first and foremost, I also shoot um, rimfire and I also have an FAC and I also shoot a little bit of airsoft for fun, as do a few other members of the Grampian Air Rifle Club, Gark, where I shoot. Hi everyone. I just wanted to basically bring you up to speed on uh, what's what, the basics, just a basic, basic rundown uh, on airsoft, what's involved. Um, I don't, I used to play paintball at university, I don't go running around the woods anymore, thanks to uh, thanks to these fellas. I can't go running around the woods, and I might have a go at airsoft at some point, but it'll be a, a static role. And there is actually a field about an hour north of here, I believe, it's just changed from paintball to airsoft. So I am planning to maybe uh, have a cheeky go at that at some point, and do some sna static sniping, we'll see. Um, but anyway. Thought I'd bring you uh, a bit of a rundown of some kit. I happen to own uh, five airsoft guns. There's a little stack here. You can't unfortunately see the rest of it, but a uh, small stack of boxes here of goodies. And I'll be bringing you the highs and lows of some of these. Um, basically, I uh, I love shooting of any kind. I always find it very relaxing. Always have done. Um, sort of challenging, but also relaxed. And airsoft could be an extension of that, uh, for, especially for those of you without my mobility issues. And of course, if any of you are Scotland-based shooters, um, and let's say, for example, you want to get into air guns and you don't want to get an air gun license, airsoft is a, a one way into shooting that um, doesn't involve licensing, as long as you stick to the limits. Um, and the airsoft fields, I'll explain um, the re results of my research, I've just topped up the research I did um, a couple of years ago. May 2018, I wrote an article for Airgun World, and it was a third, sort of a follow-on after doing two articles on Scottish airgun licensing. The um, effect it's had on the shooters, the effect it's had on the gun shops, killed a lot of trade. And then I did a follow-on on Airsoft and what's involved and... Um, I'll, I'll insert one or two pictures around about here of from that uh, article, that research I did, of one or two cool bits of uh, Airsoft kit. Uh, this is when Airsoft World, the shop, was still located in Crossgates in Fife. They've now relocated to Cowden Beath, and uh, I'm probably going to pop in hopefully in the next few weeks while I'm in the area. Um, looking forward to that. And I'll also insert a link below to my uh, Flickr album from that article. And... Um, so you'll be able to see some more of the photos and there's links underneath the photos and descriptions with more information. Oh, and I should also explain, I'm trying to speak loudly so you can hear me more clearly. I've been trying several plug-in microphones. This is one of three. It's going back because basically the best thing I've found is to use a different camera app on my phone and which is doing the recording for us. Turn up the sensitivity up to maximum and because uh, none of these handy sort of small affordable microphones I've tried none of them have a dB gain which is something I've discovered you need from googling all about vlogging and uh, and such like um, so I'm going to be returning that getting a refund and I'm going to see about getting a better microphone if and when I start up uh, Patreon um, for to try and raise some funds to improve equipment like this I'm not, never, never going to be able to afford a better studio but than the spare room but uh, if I get some Patreon support, I might look into using that for a better recording system, better sound system, so you can all hear me better. But I've turned up the sensitivity, I've moved the camera closer, and uh, hopefully you can hear me fine. So what's Airsoft about then? Um, it's essentially uh, 
they're relatively low powered air guns of sorts. Legally, they're not air guns because um, they were they were once upon a time the Home Office air weapons uh, guidelines that were given away free in a couple of years ago in a copy of Air Gun World. Thanks for that. Uh, classed airsoft as uh, one jewel, um, so therefore not licensed. It that was already when that was printed it was already incorrect the facts um, but back when I wrote my article um, airsoft was classed as too low powered to um, be anywhere near air gun licensing uh, classification um, I've just done I've just done my latest research today got myself up to date and in the last couple of years the law has changed and power has come into it into the limits so it was previously um, your Airsoft guns were limited by feet per second, regardless of how heavy the little plastic BBs were, which are basically six millimeter BBs. Now they have brought um, energy in joules into the equation. So um, the new limit is 1.3 joules for select fire off any, any airsoft guns capable of full auto. Uh, the sort of thing you just saw a minute ago in that clip. Um, and 2.5 joules for a single shot for any airsoft guns limited to single shots i.e. Uh, spring powered um, bolt action rifles speaking of which i'll put a link in below to two excellent excellent channels uh, which i've uh, I, I enjoy watching net from time to time and these are airsoft channels very established guys one is called uh, silo entertainment and the other one is novrich and um I'll put thanks for those guys because they're very entertaining sometimes. And regarding, I know to air gunners, airsoft it might be frowned upon. But as you saw from the clip at the start of this video, it can be a lot of fun. Um, there are some limitations, uh, not just the power, um, but it can be a heck of a lot of fun. And it, just an alternative, a fun alternative to air guns sometimes. If you watch these videos, for example, Silo Entertainment recently challenged a couple of his, uh, he, he challenged a couple of his, his friends and they were hitting playing cards at 55 meters with a bolt action uh, airsoft sniper rifle that's pretty cool um, there's been spoof things they've got um, air powered uh, shotguns and gatling guns and all manner of other stuff um, there's a lot of fun stuff on that channel a um, bit of an alternative power wise to watching an, an, a youtube channel like uh, demolition ranch <laughs> But that's Texas when anything goes in Texas, obviously. From the clip at the start of the video, you'll have seen me and Bry firing this. And this is heavyweight uh, GSG, German support guns, uh, 522, which is a replica of Hecklecock MP5K. Machine pistol. A lot of fun. And uh, magazine takes BBs that feed from there. And you, uh, you've you seen Bry winding on the wheel on the mag. And the two field strip bolts, take the cap off, plug in the battery, charge the battery, and uh, away you go. Um, select fire, ambidextrous, safe, single shot, and full auto. A lot of fun. Range-wise, um, and this, this fella, the legal limit for the full auto being 1.3 joules, if you use 0.2 gram BBs, which are commonly used for these comparisons, um, the legal limit, 1.3 joules, is 375 feet per second. So most airsoft sites use uh, 350. They sort of give themselves a safety margin, round it down, 350 feet per second. At 350, I think when I chronoed that last time, it was 335 or thereabouts. So safely within the 350, never mind the 375 legal limit. Um, but uh, yeah, you can easily, easily with this, aim shots within a sort of a... I don't know, quality street um, tin lid type size target out to 50 meters, easily. A lot of fun. Um, and select fire, full auto and so on. Uh, yeah, heck, heck of a lot of fun. Oh, and I should mention the BBs. Um, I use, <laughs> this is one of the cheaper brands and hence it comes in a milk carton. I uh, bought, first bought Biosphere BBs because they're plastic, but they're biodegradable. You don't get that with air gun pellets. Um, so I'll include some shots around about here of uh, three or four brands of BBs I've got at the moment. Um, um, there are different weights available point, from 0.2 gram and, and less up to about 0.45, 0.5 gram. 
Um, but because Airsoft is now brought in, Airsoft legislation has now been brought in that limits it to energy rather than just velocity feet per second. As your BB weight goes up, your feet per second limit comes down. It's just just, just maths. Uh, one or two brands which apparently, uh, well, I found this out chatting to the excellent guys at Airsoft World in Fife, by Duncan and Co. Nice speaking to you again. I'll be speaking to you soon, hopefully. Um, I found out there are one or two brands that are BBs that can potentially shatter on impact with hard objects. So you've got to be careful. And the minimum for any airsoft activity is safety specs. Um, and usually for airsoft, they wear more of a full face type mask. Uh, if, if they do go for just glasses, then they're glasses with, that are sealed so they don't have we don't have any ingress uh, routes for, for BBs on the sides. Uh, so minimum safety standards, maximum limits for feet per second for uh, and for the BBs themselves, and uh, everyone's happy. And uh, oh, and there's a, there's a sort of an etiquette whereby if you if you're playing airsoft and you walk around the corner with a rifle that's capable bolt action rifle, single shot only, and the limit for that 2.5 joules would be 500 feet per second on most sites. That's a heck of a, a heck of a, a sort of an ouchy uh, potential close up. So if you, if you were to walk around the corner in an airsoft playing field and there's somebody point blank in front of you and they haven't got the gun raised, you sort of say, bang, you're, you're gone, you're dead. And uh, they'll acknowledge because they don't want to be given a welt from uh, a high powered airsoft BB gun at close range. I don't have any of those. I've only got pistols uh, just acquired over the years. So let's. Um, Oh, and before I get on to the, um, the actual pistols I've got for show and tell, sorry, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there. I've um, got some interesting kit to show you. Um, before I get there, I'll just mention one crucial point here, legally wise. Legally speaking, aside from uh, velocity limits or power limits, energy limits, whatever, joules, foot pounds, feet per second, whatever, there's uh, another limit, which is if I open the, the first two cases. Um, the law is a bit of a peculiar thing for these these fellas at point of sale, um, but if I just quickly explain it, um, this Steyr GB, and uh, it's a, it's, I don't think they're even manufactured anymore. It's um, the real thing is a nine millimeter Parabellum uh, semi-automatic pistol, all steel construction. Um, this was the first airsoft gun I ever earned, I ever owned before I'd even heard of Airsoft. And teenage me in my bedroom, um, if a wasp or a blue bottle came into my bedroom, I would pull this out and blast the things. And it did mean redecorating my bedroom every few years, but it was worth it for the fun. And not having to go and chase uh, wasps out of the bedroom. So I'll show you this fella. It's a realistic size and shape. So realistic looking, weight wise, mainly plastic, apart from there's a, a compressed gas cylinder in the butt, in the hilt, that fills up via a small nozzle you can see here from gas cylinders like this. You sort of fill up, I'll, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, the plastic magazine, single column in this, in this case, and um, this one's so lame, it's even got a sort of a, you can pretend you're cocking it for reenactment scenarios, but None of the catches work apart from the magazine release and um, there's no blowback action. So a bit lame, but like I say, I've had this since I was a teenager. Uh, this one was manufactured by um, Tokyo Marui, Japanese famous, famous airsoft man manufacturer in Japan. And the reason I pulled this out first, this legally, regardless of the power, is classed as a RIF, realistic imitation firearm. So it's all plastic, but I cannot go, even though I've got an air gun license and a firearms license, I can't go into a shop, like for example, Airsoft World in Fife, and buy this because I'm not on the UK ARA, UKARA uh, Airsoft Players Database. As soon as you start playing Airsoft, you start attending a site regularly. Uh, once you've been more than three times in any sort of three month period, they put you on the database. And once you're on the database, you can go to a shop and you can buy a realistic uh, imitation firearm like this uh, and then you can go and play and 
a lot, a lot of what these guys are into uh, and women is, is realism and that's what you get if, once you're on the database you can get a riff um, the other way of getting on the player database the Yukara database is there's one or two obscure um, sort of uh, methods but the main other one is if you're involved with reenactments for example historical reenactments and you go into airsoft world and you can buy world war one and world war ii uh, rifles pistols machine guns you can buy a vietnam era m60 that weighs 20 kilos you really can um very cool stuff in that shop very very cool go in there and try not drooling i, I fail every time um so reenactment wise oh and they want another thing reenactment wise um if you get a um, star wars blaster maybe you do star wars reenactments or any other sci-fi the the classic the famous alien I'll, I'll put a link in right about here to one there's an aliens um remember the film aliens films um there's aliens pulse rifle as used by the colonial marines and um i saw one on the wall in uh, airsoft world in fife when i visited for that previous uh, researching that previous licensing article and um the aliens pulse rifle underneath all the hot plastic furniture by hollywood is a tommy gun an m1a tommy gun from prohibition era uh, i kid you not um, and there is a, a modern version limited edition version of that pulse rifle available from airsoft world and other airsoft retailers which has got it looks like urban camouflage like two tones and shades of gray and such like in black it's not when you look closely it's got xenomorph figures in the the paint job which is which is very cool and also it's got a shot counter that counts down from 99 as you fire the bbs awesome stuff if you don't have a yukara um exemption from uh, from the licensing restrictions um so you're not a player and you're not a reenactor or whatever then if you're like me you're just a citizen you can walk in you can still walk into that shop and buy uh, airsoft guns but they have to be an if imitation not realistic imitation just imitation this is what's called a two-tone and as you can see nice and subtle it's actually a desert eagle one-to-one -one scale semi-realistic looking um very few of the controls work on this and on this fella there's 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 nothing in it magazine's empty so don't worry about where i'm pointing this um but this fella the only control that works on it apart from the magazine release is this little catch here to select a single shot or full auto and we have a desert eagle replica airsoft pistol which is a little bit heavier than than the, the plastic all plastic version but no nowhere near as heavy as the two kilo real thing um and uh, unfortunately it's not blowback the hammer releases the slide so i'll do some footage close up of each of these pistols showing you a bit more but that's so the main two categories of airsoft gun are ifs and riffs imitation realistic I'll, I'll lay out all my airsoft guns here on the cleaning mat for a group shot and as i said there's different weights and types of bbs as well but myself i only prefer to use biodegradable gotta keep the environmental conscience uh, happy so why do we shoot if we're not involved with airsoft why do some of us for example some of my friends at the club at gark why do we shoot airsoft guns they're just a lot of fun as you saw from that clip at the start full auto and this is this one's a heavyweight but full auto airsoft guns are a lot of fun um and i've got a surprisingly good range um but there are limitations uh one is they are well this is a, a biggie they are notorious for ricochets these little plastic or biodegradable plastic bbs will ricochet all over the place whenever they hit anything solid so before you even pick your gun up and load it safety glasses go on and um unfortunately we can't shoot our airsoft guns indoors in grand Prix Air rifle club because the painted floor of the range when people walk out to change targets that will be very hazardous and dangerous if there were bbs rolling around on it so at our club airsoft or bbs any any air guns that fire bbs including air pistols uh, they're all outdoors only so and that becomes a limitation with some of these some of these airsoft guns are gas powered and they are 
They're very, very susceptible to uh, low temperatures, even more so than CO2, 12 gram CO2 powered air pistols. So I'm going to put some more footage of me trying a few other, me and Bri trying a few other guns at night, recently at Gark, outdoors. And I went up last weekend to um, uh, our outdoor range at Walkmill and um, took some, tried to get some footage outdoors. Semi-successful there, again, because the gas guns are very, low-powered gas guns, very susceptible to temperatures. And it was about one degree that day, so... They, they froze down pretty quickly and the, the velocities were pretty low. But on to the other, so if, you, if, you're, if your airsoft gun's not gas powered um, by gun gas, for example, it's going to be electric. Uh, here we have a battery. We've got contacts on either end and there's a tiny arrow at one end to tell you which way to put it in. Basically, within the grip, there's a small piston like almost like an air gun sort of piston in a spring rifle and there's a high speed motor a, a gearbox ideally metal gearbox plastic gearboxes don't last there's a gearbox and each time you squeeze the trigger there's a delay this is not these are not fast lock times these pistols because each time you squeeze the trigger the the, the, the motor spins round the gears pull pu pull the piston back against the spring then release it and you get one shot. I check the magazine, there is nothing in this, it's completely empty, so I don't need to put the glasses on. But if I, if I let you listen, before you hear the, the sort of bang, if you like, of the shot, the, shot the, the firing, you hear the mechanism, the whirring of the motors, the cogs, the gearbox, and the piston being pulled back and let go to then. There's an air transfer port to then fire the BB. And that's the principle of all electric uh, airsoft guns, including this heavyweight. And this has got a battery, which is nearly a foot long, uh, a sealed battery unit. Uh, within here, there's a motor, a gearbox again, some cogs, and a piston is pulled back and released, pulled back and released for each shot. Third category of airsoft gun is uh, the highest power ones, if you like, velocity wise, uh, single shot bolt action rifles where it's literally as you cock the bolt of the rifle you're cocking a spring and that's all the effort that's required it's nothing like the effort of a of a, of a break barrel rifle against a big heavy spring these are only flask firing plastic bbs right so i'm gonna move the camera rejig it all and uh, show you some uh, some mechanisms and some of these pistols what makes them tick so with the electric powered uh, Desert Eagle, as you saw from the illustration, there's a piston of sorts in the grip, an uh, electric motor, a gearbox, and that's what controls the fella. Um, open it up. You've got a two tone uh, IF imitation firearm with a Picatinny rail and the Desert Eagle's own Picatinny rail on top. Um, and the only other working controls are the fire selector for single shot or full auto. If I press the button, eject the magazine, it falls free because it's a metal magazine. Um, the Biosphere BBs I've got in a handy pouring spout. So you fill up your speed loader and press the button. Top gut pops free and literally just... That's the magazine fill. Lock it with the button. Insert, and then I'm firing into a, uh, into a uh, a mesh bag here. That's all there is to it. Okay, the next one, and this uh, original originally this was bought for 150 quid. This is a Sig. P229, Sig Sauer. Um, it's advertised on here as 328 feet per second, 0 0.6 joule, range of 40 meters. Um, 891 grams, so it's a fair weight, very realistic replica, this one. Um, so. We have a metal magazine, 
and you can see I've, there's a few BBs still in this one. Um, so some of these uh, airsoft guns, there's an option of filling the magazine manually, or the long-winded way. You put a plastic cap on the end, add an alloy or brass feed tube, pour the BBs into the feed tube, and then you push down the plunger in a wanna, which fills up the magazine. Um, and the alternative way, again, using the speed loader, So that's the double column magazine ready to go. And this one being steel, um, you've got the you've got the reservoir nozzle in the butt of the magazine, and being all steel, you try the ultra gas. Um, I tried this outdoors last week and it worked, but since last week it's uh, started leaking. So if I give it a shake and give it a try, yeah, what you can hear there. There's a leak on the magazine at the base. And yeah, you can see gas escaping from here. So there's not not like that's really that's very cold now. It really it's really frozen down from the gas escaping. Um so can't really demonstrate this one firing, but I'll show you a clip. I'll put the clip in at the end of all of these guns being fired. So control wise on this one, uh, last shot hold open on the slide, as you can see. So we've got a working slide release, and when the hammer's cocked, a working decocking lever. I'll just demonstrate this, which safely lowers the hammer. So to field strip this fella, we eject the magazine, pull this slide most of the way back, turn the field strip lever around, and off comes the slide. So this is very, very realistic for field stripping. But one extra feature, you've got a, a sort of a, a very realistic slide assembly here. But see, there's a cog. I don't know if you can see that. There's a cog in there. Now this cog, it's vital for all airsoft guns. This cog controls the hop-up, which basically is the backspin. I'll explain uh, the hop-up fully and the backspin in a moment. Next we have the real, the real McCoy. Um, this is an Auto 9. And for those film buffs out there who like their uh, sci-fi, you may recognise this from Robocop. So, this fella is none other than Robocop's Auto 9. Now, the Auto 9 is based upon from about here onwards, it's based upon a Beretta Model 93R, which is also pictured in this uh, accompanying leaflet. So that's a machine pistol, a Beretta Model 93, and you've got an extended barrel with a cutaway there for a compensator, and you've got a pull-down lever, which acts as a front pistol grip. Uh, and you've got an, a large extended magazine because this fired a three shot burst or fully auto. Um, so the airsoft version, it's an if imitation, it's not a riff, it's not realistic because it's got the uh, two tone paint job, but I think that's that. I don't think that looks too, uh, too amiss to me. I think that would look perfectly at place in Robocop or Judge Dredd or any such sci fi movies. Um, you've got some authentic controls, there's a field strip lever. There's a slide release, and at the back here we have a selector for fully auto, three shot burst, or single shots, and just behind that, a safety catch. So off shows a little small red dot, and on for safe. Um, magazine is the heaviest part of this, this, this pistol, this airsoft. So that's a metal magazine containing the reservoir. Very similar to many air, air, air guns, um, gas powered air guns like um, Colt 1911s and Beretta Model 92s and such like. And again, feed it via the same way using either a feed tube to manually push the, a, a, a string of BBs down 
or one of these and you pump it and feed the BBs in. Unfortunately, you can't see them all loaded in a double column stack because uh, the magazine's enclosed. But once gassed up, realistic, close it up with the slide release and the hammer's cocked. Now there's no BBs in this, just to prove it. Yep, nothing there, but there is some gas and the gas is again, gas is again loaded here via the fill nozzle on the grip. Um, there's no Picatinny rails on this one, but the front is pure Hollywood Cosmetics uh, for Robocop. And I'll show you this in action. Single shot. And I'll, I'll hold down the, close re the slide release manually so it doesn't lock back after each shot. Put it on three shot burst. Or full auto. Okay, so hopefully my neighbors won't be too alarmed by that noise. Um, but they know me, they know me anyway. Uh, right, so put it back on to single shot for next time. Safety on. And I will eject the magazine with the working ejection and drop the hammer. Okay, safety back on, magazine back in. So this is the, probably the coolest uh, airsoft gun I own because of the full auto three shot burst or single shot function. The, out of the box, this comes with single shot or full auto. Uh, and I've had a small, a small extra um, fitted that I bought from Air online from Airsoft World and Duncan Airsoft World kindly fitted that for me last year so it's got the three shot burst just like Robocop on the firing line in the film. Right so last but not least we have the GSG German Sport Guns 522 PK which is their replica, Airsoft replica of the Heckler Cock MP5K um, if it had the stock, this would probably be the PDW, but this one's not got a foregrip and it's got comes with Picatinny rails. Um, but I've got the uh, a plastic Picatinny foregrip foregrip slotted onto this one. Um, so controls wise, we have pretty authentic magazine release. Um, BBs come out here and. When you see the full length version of our range video, Brian and I use it firing this, you'll see that every once in a while, after a several bursts of fully auto, you basically wind on this. That there's a reservoir in here containing loose BBs, and when you wind that wheel on, it lines more of them up ready to fire. So there'll be a stack in here ready. There is a slot for a cocking lever, but when I was bought this second hand in a job lot, um, I, in a second-hand shop, um, this one, the cocking lever had been snapped off, but it's only cosmetic anyway. So what I need to do now before you next want to play with this is uh, remove the two rear studs, take the rear cap off, pull the wires out and connect up the uh, the battery to give it a few hours charge. But that's, it's got a select fire, so it's got a single shot, sorry, safe, single shot and automatic, ambidextrous. And it's got an authentic Heckler Cock peep sight at the rear, as well as the main top rail, Picatinny rail for sights, and a three position, one, two, three position Picatinny rail at the fore end. And as you can see, I've got a I've got a, 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 a grip on this one as well. So compensator on the muzzle on screws. And you could put a, a fake uh, moderator on or suppressor on there if you wanted. And you can probably also get, if you take this rear cap off, you can probably make it an MP5K A3 by putting a, a telescopic buttstock on here as well. Uh, and there's a lanyard ring as on the front of the uh, the trigger guard as well. So a lot of fun this one. And uh, you'll see at the end of the compilation footage, best used with a head torch on the 50 meter range outdoors in winter. So uh, the head torch illuminates the BBs right out to 50 meters, just like tracers.
a lot of fun. So a little bit more about the uh, hop-up facility or the backspin. There should be on all airsoft guns a, a, a hop-up facility for backspin and this is basically a tiny rubber um, sleeve if you like that you can adjust how much it bears down into the cavity of the barrel how much more or less uh, to imbue more or less backspin on the pellet more or less hop up and basically if you fired an airsoft gun with a six millimeter bbs which are not very aer aerodynamic obviously if you fire them with no backspin the bb travels along and just classic ballistic trajectory and drops um, if you put um, too much a backspin on, too much hop up, I'm no joking, I'm not joking, the BB will travel and the further it gets, it'll climb up and up and up and almost do a stall and then drop straight down to the floor. Um, so the, the, the side on, the sort of curve, the trajectory is climbing like a ski jump and then drops like a stone. And if you get the hop up just right, then the BB travels horizontally for an unbelievable distance and then almost as if you cut the strings gravity takes effect drops um, so the hop up is that the reason that something is unaerodynamic and low powered as a bp that doesn't have any spin of rifling because the airsoft guns are unrifled barrels uh, smooth bore um, then uh, the, the hop up is the reason it, they can travel for such long difference distances they are very susceptible to temperatures, especially the uh, the gas guns, and they are very susceptible to uh, windy days. So if it was blowing a hoolie, you've got no chance outside anything other than short range airsoft gaming. But remember, safety first, don't forget your safety specs. Biodegradable BBs, the way to go. Thanks again for watching. Hope you've subscribed. Please uh, click and subscribe if you haven't already. Need your support and uh, need to know people are watching. And uh, like I say, if at some point I get Patreon uh, support, once I pass a thousand subscribers, if and when, then um, I'll uh, I'll put invest the anything I get from Patreon right back into um, better audio setup, better camera setup, and uh, also bringing you more kit, to, more exclusive kit reviews. And uh, I'm working on one right now, which will be awesome. Um, so coming up. Upcoming clips, I'm going to meet up with Bruce uh, Phoenix from the Night Vision Forum. We're going to meet up Christmas and the festive season has got in the way very much. So uh, I'd love to bring you this 10 days ago. But we're going to meet up, uh, this is Tuesday, we're going to meet up on Monday and hopefully record our, it's probably going to be a couple of segments long, record our in-depth, uh, independent uh, scope assessment, which is basically comparing and contrasting six very different rifle scopes for air gun use um, using the PARD 007. So some scopes may not be compatible with a PARD setup. Uh, it's, it's a night vision, day and night add-on imager and recorder in HD and with a built-in IR illuminator, just like the PARD 008. Um, so we'll be using the PARD add-on uh, with six different scopes. We've got six different, well, it's got three or four different um, um, bayonet collars, uh, including two new, brand new adjustable versions. Um, and uh, also bringing you a uh, horizontal LRF, laser range finder, uh, splash, horizontal splash uh, footage, uh, comparing and contrasting the vertical splash with the horizontal splash for, for hunting, for pest control. Um, and hopefully very soon, I'll bring you some rat hunting footage as well from our local permission. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping to be physically able to do that very soon um so uh, wish me luck and um let me know let me know in the comments what you think let me know what you want to see more of or less of and um by all means suggest other other things you'd like me to cover in videos either by myself or with bruce uh, the night vision guru and uh, we'll see what we can do thanks for watching